Hi everyone, and thanks for clicking on our video. My name is Lydia Zekintinu, and I'm a PhD student at Northeastern University. And I'm gonna talk about our paper, Reasoning about Generalization via Conditional Mutual Information, which is joint work with Thomas Steinke from IBM Research. Now let us first recall the statistical machine learning setting. We have a space of example Z and a distribution D over the space, and this represents the population about which we want to learn. Then we draw a sample set of NIID samples from the distribution D, and let's call that Z, and we feed that sample set to a learning algorithm A. The learning algorithm then returns a hypothesis or model A of C, which we often denote by W. Now the way we measure how good a model W is, is through a loss function, which we call L. The algorithm only sees the empirical loss, which is the average over the loss over each point of the sample set. On the other hand, what we really care about is the true loss, which is the expected loss on a new, freshly drawn sample from the population, um, from the distribution D. And ideally, we hope that the sample set Z is a good representation of the population, and so minimizing the empirical loss would be a good strategy if we really want to minimize the true loss. So the question of generalization is then, how can we ensure that the empirical loss is a good proxy for the true loss? There have been many great methods proposed to prove generalization. Uniform convergence ensures strong generalization guarantees and it refers to combinatorial properties of the class of hypotheses. And perhaps the most uh, famous measure of combinatorial structure is the of the hypothesis class is the VC dimension of the class. If our algorithm is a compression scheme, uh, so that is if essentially it chooses only a small fraction of its input to learn from, then we can also show that it generalizes well. Another category of conditions is distributional stability. And an important member of that category is differential privacy. Differential privacy essentially asks that a small change in the input of the algorithm does not change the distribution over the outputs of the algorithm too much. Then there's the well-developed theory of uniform stability, which imposes a condition on the loss function, and it also entails strong generalization guarantees. Um, and the more recent loss statistical stability, which is also a loss-based condition. Now, last but not least, we have information theoretic approaches, and this is ultimately what our paper extends, uh, and I'm gonna talk about, talk about this in the next slide. So overall, all these great methods are mostly compatible with each other, and our information theoretic framework attempts to unify some of those. So the central notion in these information theoretic approaches is the mutual information between the input of the algorithm and the output. And the important relevant property of mutual information is that if an algorithm has low mutual information, then we can prove that it generalizes well. And indeed, there's uh, quite a few known conditions that imply a bound on the mutual information of the algorithm. In particular, epsilon differential privacy, which we call pure uh, differential privacy, implies a bound of epsilon squared n over two. Um, and we also have the generic bound of log of the size of the outer space, space which comes from uh, the Shannon entropy of uh, the uniform distribution over the outer space. Now, what does the mutual information not do? First of all, we can't get a bound on the mutual information from approximate differential privacy or epsilon delta differential privacy, which is arguably the more practical variant of differential privacy. And also, the mutual information is not compatible with uniform convergence. And in particular, the mutual information can be unbounded when strong generalization holds. Um, this intuitively comes from the fact that uh, on a continuous domain, a single point could uh, have infinite information content. Um, so Basili, Moran, Nahum, Schaefer, and Yehudayev recently proved that for the natural class of uh, thresholds on the real line, any proper and consistent learner has unbounded mutual information, although this class has VC dimension one, so strong generalization holds. So to overcome the shortcomings of mutual information, we propose a new notion uh, based on conditional mutual information. 
And to describe it, let's consider the following thought experiment. First, we draw two n independent samples from the distribution D, and we pair them in a table, which we call the super sample Z tilde. Um, you can think of those as a mix of real samples and ghost samples that the algorithm will never see, but we don't know yet which is which. Now we also have a selector function S, which is basically an n bit string. S is uniformly random and it's independent from the super sample and from the algorithm, and it defines a partition between the real samples and the ghost samples. It basically tells us from each pair of the table which one is a real sample. Now we take the real sample z tilde of s and we run the algorithm on that data set. The conditional mutual information of the algorithm, or the CMI as we call it, with respect to distribution D, is the mutual information of the output of the algorithm run on the data set that s picked with s, conditioned on the super sample z tilde. Essentially, the CMI asks, how well can we distinguish the real samples from the ghost samples? So if I give you this table, the super sample, and I give you the output of the algorithm, how easily could you tell uh, what S is? How easily could you tell which sample of each pair went into the data set? In contrast, the mission information asks, how well can we reconstruct the whole input from the output of the algorithm? Now, CMI satisfies some important robustness properties like post-processing and non-adaptive composition. Um, and its key property, of course, is that low CMI implies generalization. And we also can get CMI bounds, again, from pure differential privacy. We can get the same bound of epsilon squared n over 2. Um, and we can also retrieve a bound from the size of the output space, uh, as we did before. So all these bounds, all these things hold for uh, mutual information as well. But CMI has some additional important properties. First of all, it's always finite. And you can see this by bounding, uh, bounding the CMI via the entropy of the selector function. So CMI is always between 0 and n. And essentially, a nice intuitive way to think about CMI is that basically the conditioning normalizes the information content of each sample to one bit. So if my algorithm um, blatantly outputs k of the input points and nothing about the rest of the points, then it would have CMI k. Second, we prove that CMI is bounded by VC dimension and compression schemes. Um, and finally, it is also bounded by epsilon delta differential privacy, or what we call approximate differential privacy. Um, and we prove that through total variation stability. Basically, delta total variation stability is equivalent to, uh, to zero delta differential privacy. And so we can get a bound from approximate differential privacy through that. So CMI additionally incorporates uh, uniform convergence and approximate differential privacy into the framework. Now, the key property, as we said, of CMI is that it implies uh, generalization. And since the, there's no one form of generalization guarantee, we prove different bounds, which also demonstrate the versatility of the CMI framework. First, we prove bounds for bounded linear losses, that is, losses that are uh, have range in 0, 1. We prove that the expected difference of the empirical and the true loss is at most the square root of CMI over n, uh, that the square difference is at most uh, CMI over n, and finally, we prove a relative and additive bound that can be useful when the expected empirical loss is zero, so we're in the realizable setting, um, or if it's very small. We also extend our bounds to unbounded loss functions, and by that I mean that they have unbounded range, but we do require some bound on higher moment. So this bound includes this variant terms um, in the square root. So common loss functions that fall into this category are the hinge loss or the square loss, basically the mean squared error. And last but not least, we also extend our bounds further to nonlinear loss functions. And an example of those is the area under the rock curve, which is a very popular statistic for classification. Uh, so we prove a uh, generalization bound for this statistic as an application of our general bound for nonlinear loss functions. 
Okay, so we established that low CMI implies generalization. Uh, so we will now see what conditions imply low CMI. And this will demonstrate the unifying side, the unifying property of the framework. First, there's distributional stability conditions, such as um, two square root epsilon differential privacy, epsilon concentrated differential privacy, epsilon mutual information stability, epsilon KL stability, and epsilon average leave one out stability. And all these imply an epsilon n bound on the CMI of the algorithm. Um, and this holds for the mutual information as well. Now, what we add to this list is epsilon total variation stability which also implies the same bound. And ultimately, this is what ties approximate differential privacy into the CMI framework. We also still have the generic bound of log of the size of the output space. Um, and now we add to those compression schemes, proving that an algorithm that is a compression scheme of size k has CMI at most k log n. And finally, we incorporate uniform convergence by proving that for any hypothesis class with VC dimension at most d, there exists an empirical risk minimization algorithm with CMI at most d log n. Now, note that there is a tight mismatch between the two notions, between uniform convergence or VC dimension and CMI. VC dimension is a property of the hypothesis space. So that's basically the range of the outputs of any algorithm that learns in that, uh, in that space, whereas CMI is a property of the algorithm itself. So we managed to connect the two by proving that for every class there exists an ERM with low CMI, but it's not true that uh, every ERM for this class has bounded CMI. So to sum up, uh, CMI is a new framework for reasoning about generalization which unifies existing methods, including compression schemes and uniform convergence and approximate differential privacy. And it also provides a variety of generalization bounds, in part due to the fact that CMI does not depend on a particular loss function. And this allows us to retrieve the known bounds uh, from other conditions going through CMI. Uh, there's quite a lot of points for further work. Uh, the first one would be to improve the existing CMI bounds. In particular, can we shave the log n from the VC bound? And we proved that this is true for one-dimensional thresholds in the realizable case, uh, but we can prove it, prove it uh, in general. Um, another question would be, can we utilize assumption on the distribution to get sharper bounds? Uh, and we also provide an example of that. Um, and perhaps more importantly, can we combine the conditioning approach of CMI with other notions that improve on the mutual information framework? And actually, recent work has already demonstrated that this is possible. Uh, so the different direction would be to explore the relationship of CMI with other frameworks. So recent work extends our bounds to pa the pack Bayesian setting. And what we'd really like to incorporate into our framework is uniform stability. Uh, uniform stability is a very well-developed theory that um, uh, entails strong generalization bounds, but it seems incompatible with CMI because it depends on the loss function when CMI does not. Nonetheless, we connect the two by an extension of CMI, which we call evaluated CMI, but we can only retrieve slightly weaker generalization bounds uh, going through CMI. Um, another important direction would be to get high probability bounds. Uh, CMI as an average notion only gets us bounds that depend polynomially on the inverse of the failure probability and not exponentially as the high probability bounds would require. And lastly, can we get a variant of CMI that composes adaptively? Uh, we do propose another extension, which we call universal CMI, and it's a stronger notion than CMI. And it composes adaptively, but differential privacy implies slightly weaker bounds for this notion. So further work would, need, would be needed uh, on this front. Um, thank you very much for watching the video, and we hope to see you at the discussion.